The Great Central Railway's London extension was engineered for speed, with gentle curves and encouraging gradients. Whilst much of its 92 miles succumbed to Dr Beeching's aversion to duplication in 1966, a short section to the south of Rugby will soon be alive to the sound of engines again, albeit in vehicles running on tarmac, not rails. Catesby Tunnel was the route's largest structure, driven mostly full size from nine construction shafts at a remarkably quick average rate of 110 yards per month. Impressive, certainly, but from a topographical perspective, all that effort really wasn't necessary. A deep cutting would have sufficed, but the owner of Catesby House objected strongly to the presence of a railway. These uh, wealthy people at that period, they could insist upon a clause being placed in the Act, so they had to build a tunnel. The northern portion uh, was the most difficult to, to construct because of the nature of the ground. And because the landowner insisted on uh, no shaft being anywhere nearer than 500 yards, it was made even worse. It says much about the tunnel's engineering that it remains in good condition despite the withdrawal of its maintenance regime 54 years ago. So good in fact that the structure is on the brink of a new life as a vehicle testing facility, allowing performance, aerodynamics, noise, cooling and emissions to be repeatedly analysed in a controlled environment at full scale. There'll be nothing like it for hire anywhere in the world, bringing two key areas of benefit to manufacturers. One is around calibration and certification. But the really interesting one is marginal gains. So if you're designing a product, you're trying to make it better. And you can make it better not by big leaps and steps. They're all gone. It's all small steps. Finding marginal gains to improve the product is difficult. To do that, you need a controlled experiment. So you go in a Catesby tunnel, there's no wind, there's no temperature change, and you can try 30 small changes to the vehicle, and you can pick the best five that are a step forwards and put those together as a package. The facility comprises two distinct parts, with a four and a half acre science park built on the site of Charwelton's former station, offering office space, workshops and the prospect of more than 200 jobs. The first building here echoes the design of the goods shed at nearby Brackley. Half a mile down the old track bed is a vehicle preparation building, which will be linked to the tunnel by a passageway to ensure confidentiality. 275 metres at the ends of the tunnel will be given over to bats, but for testing purposes that still leaves a mile and a half of perfectly straight roadway falling to the north on a gradient of just 1 in 176. Vehicles will be able to maintain a constant speed of 100 miles per hour for about 40 seconds before braking. Work to bring the tunnel back into use began early this year, with the contractor, Stepnell, facing the planning and logistical constraint of having access for plant and materials from only the southern end of the 3,000-yard long structure. It's been a project of many challenges, imposed both by the technical requirements and nature's ongoing introduction of water into the tunnel. Repurposing the drain has been the starting point get that going, be able to dry out some of the mounts. We've then had to manage the water ingress because the track has to be dry when it's finished. They need as much of the tunnel space as possible to, to minimise any um, influence on the aerodynamic testing they're doing. So they don't want anything, a structure inside a structure, they want to maximise the use of the tunnel as best as possible. And so we've had to now look at what we can do in managing the water ingress. Expected to cost £13 million, the project is due for completion next spring, marking the start of another journey, which is intended to include academic collaborations and see the facility become a globally recognised innovation centre for vehicle manufacturers and motorsport teams. Public access to Catesby Tunnel will be offered on Sundays for cycling. It's an unexpected transformation for a grand piece of Victorian infrastructure demonstrating just how valuable such assets can become when viewed by those with vision and ambition. <laughs>